you are quite critical of this notion of interpretations of quantum mechanics. And you, I mean, I feel like you don't even, even like that term. You just say there are three things. There's the mathematical representation, there's a theory, and there's an interpretation. And you kind of said that sometimes people, they, they, they call it theory and interpretation and they, they, they kind of mess it up, they obfuscate. Mm -hmm. So if you could outline, yeah, what are the three things? So there's a mathematical representation, a theory, and an interpretation. And how should we, again, as lay people, think of these things? Uh, when it comes to specifically uh, physics? As you say, I, I actually don't like the word interpretation in discussing foundations of physics. I, I don't think I ever tried to define it. I just think it's a word we shouldn't use. Um, <laughs> for me, a theory, a physical theory, it may not be completely precise and absolutely worked out, but it better it, you better be able to say, okay, according to this theory, A, what fundamentally exists? Right. What is there? Like, are there particles? Are there fields? Are there, you know, I mean, there. I could give you a bunch of options or maybe it's something you've never thought of, but now you have to tell me about it. That's fine. So what is the fundamental ontology? That is, what is it your theory postulates to exist? And second, how does it behave? What does it do? Right. Normally you specify dynamics. That with some equations, some dynamics. OK. Um, now, the, the, the problem is that what is taught as quantum theory, if you got a, a book, a standard physics text called quantum mechanics or quantum theory, and you read it carefully, and you said, yeah, but what is really being postulated to exist here? You wouldn't find an answer in that book. They do, just don't address that question. What they give you is what I call a predictive recipe. They say, okay, if you want to make certain kinds of predictions, do this, calculate this, you know, you know, run this through this mathematical device and what spits out the other end are some usually statistical predictions for the outcome of your experiment. Um, that just isn't a theory because it doesn't, it doesn't answer these questions. Um, this was the attitude, the, 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 this is often associated with an attitude called instrumentalism. And mm. the example that I often use, because it's true historically, you remember when Copernicus was writing his book, um, attacking Ptolemy, right? Attacking the earth centered theory and, and, and putting a sun centered theory where the earth is rotating and orbiting the sun. Um, Copernicus knew that was a dangerous theory because it seemed to contradict some stuff taken, said in the Bible, if you take it literally, right? When they, when Joshua, you know, they, the sun stopped moving right, in the, in the battle of Jericho, well, then the sun must be moving, right, and not the earth rotating. Otherwise, the Bible would have said, suddenly this, the earth stopped rotating, okay? So, you know, Copernicus knew this was kind of a dangerous doctrine. And he didn't actually publish the book. I mean, it was published kind of on his deathbed. And when it was published, there was a preface to it, by which you would have thought was written by Copernicus, because they didn't tell you, but it wasn't. It was written by this guy, Osiander. And in it, Osiander was trying to protect per Copernicus, and he said, look, don't take seriously as literally true what, what is said here, that the Earth is rotating and, and orbiting the sun. All that's being said here is that if you pretend that this is true, you can make some good predictions, right? That, that if you want to know where, where to look to find Mars in three months, um, you can use this to make those predictions and they'll be good predictions. That's instrumentalism, right? Instrumentalism says, I'm not attempting to give you an accurate account of what's really going on. I'm just giving you a kind of calculational tool to predict what will happen. Um, that's what you have in a standard quantum mechanics text. So it isn't a theory. Now, when people then talk about interpretations of quantum theory, what they really mean are not our theories. They're different theories. They're contradictory, mutually contradictory theories that try to go much further than just give you this predictive recipe. They say, maybe this is what's going on, or maybe that's what's going on, right? Does the wave function collapse? Does it, does, does it not collapse? Are there particles? Do the particles move? Do they not move? What's an electron doing? in a hydrogen atom? Is it, is it orbiting? Is it popping in and out of existence? All these kinds of things. These, this is what a theory has to answer. And what people call, quote, interpretations of quantum mechanics, 
It's they're speaking as if quantum mechanics is a theory. And then you're adding to the theory this other level of something you call an interpretation. That that's not the right story. The story is what you call quantum mechanics isn't a theory. It's a predictive algorithm. And what you're trying to find are clearly articulated theories that would give you those predictions, or at least, you know, nearly those predictions. Um, that's that's what's really going on. And and the, the language is systematically misleading. And as I often say, the reason why it's worrisome is that a, a physicist using that language can say, well, look, I've got quantum theory. What do I need an interpretation for? Who's doing this interpreting stuff? Oh, those are all philosophers. That's not physics. That's some other discipline. And they're, they, they say that because they falsely believe that what they've got in their physics books is a theory when it isn't. And this is Bell complains about this and Einstein complains about this and Schrodinger complains about this. I mean, the physicists complain about it, that they that what what was being offered as quantum wasn't even a clearly articulated account of the world. Um, and, and that's what physics should be aiming at. I think that's absolutely correct. Yeah, that's true. I mean, also here's where you know Bell introduces you. You've spoken about this quite, quite extensively. Uh, notion of like beer builds, like forget yeah. about observables. Let's talk of ontology, beer builds. Yeah. And it, what's interesting is like for a person who has a just a marginal knowledge of philosophy, totally get what ontology is. Like you, you understand like oh yeah, of course you you want to speak about what's there, but then it's surprising that for like a let's just say a a, a physics student. You need to even use this term "beables" <laughs> to even, uh, you know, like you need to invent a word to describe what's what's really yeah. there. 